Hello and welcome to today's presentation. I want to talk about an opportunity that is available to you guys as partners that really is a great opportunity for you to expand your consulting practice in the VMware space and become a strategic asset and help your customers really overcome a lot of those traditional IT challenges that we have with silos in an IT business. So we're going to talk about uh, the realizing the opportunity that exists with our cloud management platform and expand so you can really start getting engaged with your customer. So let's get into this presentation. First of all, I want to start with a statement here from one of our customers. My business and its IT organization are being engulfed by a torrent of digital opportunities. We can't respond in a timely fashion, and this threatens the success of business and the credibility of IT as a part of our organization. My question to you guys is, have you ever been involved in an organization that's struggling to keep up with day-to-day -day delivery in a traditional technology sense, let alone this new era of cloud applications and cloud services and the expansion of end user compute and mobility and workforce and virtual desktops and virtual volumes and all these other strategies that are available today to help us improve business. Of course, most of you out there are going to answer yes to that question. You've been involved with technology for some time and you know that there is an endless struggle in technology departments to keep pace with the ever-growing speed of business and technology. And looking at some of the challenges that IT traditionally faced, um, let's kind of go through a day in the life of someone working with IT operations and, and some of the problems they deal with. First, everything's traditionally being managed in silos, and many IT organizations are still structured in this way with storage, networking, compute, and application teams. Because these tools that we use today don't make it easy to manage the environment holistically, we have these point solutions that have been implemented over time that look at their view of the data center, but it's difficult to tie all this information together in kind of a cohesive platform. The issue is virtualization and cloud breaks down these silos. When something goes wrong, companies need to know what happens across all these domains. Many times the way that they try to pinpoint the issue is they get everyone on a conference call where a lot of finger pointing occurs and you get these breakdowns between groups and it's not an effective way to resolve issues. And when something serious does go wrong, operations managers are hit with something called alert storms. A good way to think of an alert storm is take the worst day you've ever had with emails and multiply that by a factor of 100, right? So how do you know where to start when it comes to managing issues? How do you know which messages are important and which ones you should have read or should not have read or you can skip and move on? IT managers face these same issues with regards to servers and storage and networking devices as well as applications and VMs and generate hundreds of thousands of alerts and log files. There's way too much data to analyze. Too many alerts to attend to, leading to fire drills, finger pointing, or simply ignoring the issue. End users are often our best monitoring tools as ultimately they tell us when something's not working. We are still very reactive in that sense. So how do companies typically manage or try to address performance and availability problems? They over-provision, right? meaning that they buy more hardware to help solve the problem. They invest in bigger, faster servers, storage, and networking. In the physical world, we tend to over-provision because the experience tells us that when you have enough resources, there shouldn't be any problems. So if you apply this mindset to a virtualized environment, you'll have negative benefits of server consolidation and shared resource. And to make matters worse, they have no insight in the cost of infrastructure, such as VMs, CPUs, memory, so there's no correlation between over-provisioning and wasted dollars. So let's break down this challenge of delivering IT and why IT teams struggle. With this silo-based approach, infrastructure teams need to build an infrastructure to begin with before you get on to the point of delivering applications and services on top of that infrastructure, right? 
So the problem with the siloed approach is you might give a request to your storage team and it takes them um, maybe uh, two days worth of work effort to maybe two days worth of work effort to go out and provision and slice up the storage and maybe that's an overassessment, but um, just bear with me. But that two days of work effort actually takes in sometimes four to five days to complete because of the handoff between the different teams, the storage team to the, the networking team to the server team and, and those integrations. So as we do multiple handoffs, every time we do a handoff, we have a delay in the handover process. So that continuous delay per silo team starts to compound over an infrastructure delivery. So that something that should take a day or two to implement quite often takes weeks to implement. And then, of course, you add the development and application teams on top of that. And as we get into product releases, we have multiple releases. So you might go through different phases of staging from development into test into production. And then, of course, you get that all into production and a new version comes through of a particular product or you make a change and you need to release another version. So the whole process starts again. Now, some of those may have already be accomplished from a capacity standpoint, but you get the idea. It's this repetitive task. The point is, is that that fragmentation in time really compounds and it makes IT struggle with its ability to deliver service. So we compound this with this cloud era. In the cloud era, we're expected to be more strategic, faster, more agile, and very quickly adopt technologies more rapidly. And we really need to boost innovation as an IT service provider. Plus, we have the prior responsibility. So we've still got to keep the environment secure. We've got to avoid any legacy debt, of course, we typically don't have increasing budgets, we have decreasing budgets, right? At the same time, we're having to drive operational excellence in the business. So this drives us to a point where a lot of organizations start to look at and what we call shadow clouds, where uh, customers leverage cloud and, and customers within the business or end users start to leverage cloud and we get this shadow IT effect because IT can't keep up. So we have approached this strategy using what's called the Software Defined Data Center. Our Software Defined Data Center includes three core foundation products. And as we've just announced at VMworld, we call this vCloud Foundation. So this includes compute virtualization. This is vSphere and vCenter, your traditional VMware virtualization, VMware Virtual SAN, and then network virtualization combined as a foundation component. Now on top of that, we want to gain efficiencies and this is where the vRealize suite comes into play. This is what we refer to as our cloud management platform. And through this suite of tools, we can implement cloud automation, cloud operational management, uh, financial aspects through vRealize business. And this is what we refer to as the cloud management stack or the cloud management platform, so to speak. And the whole goal here is to deliver uh, applications to end users, whether it's virtual desktops via phones or tablets and PCs, laptops, you get the idea, giving them access to what they really need, which is applications and data anywhere, anytime. So the reason for today's presentation and the topic that I wanted to talk to you about is helping you realize the opportunity. And yes, that is an intentional play on words. When we look at the cloud management platform, I'm going to share with you some surprising numbers here. Traditional data center growth and automation is going to continue to grow. Gartner protects a continued growth in the realm of about 13%. But what is growing quite significantly with nearly 30% annual growth continued and expected through 2019 is this cloud management platform. To put that in context, as of 2014, data center automation is about a $2 billion market. It's expected to grow to a $3.7 billion market. Whereas cloud management platforms, as it stands today, is about a $2.3 billion market. This is expected to grow by 2019 to $8.3 billion market. So where's the opportunity then? 
One of the interesting things about VMware customers is 80% of our customers only have vSphere and vCenter installed. Some of them might use virtual SAN, maybe um, some of them or a few of them have uh, network virtualization, but 80% 80, 80 of our customers only have vSphere installed. What does this mean to you? It means that there is a fantastic opportunity as a partner to get involved with these customers and help them address some of these challenges that we talked about. 80% of VMware customers only use vSphere. Our market, and what this means to you as a market, is in the Asia-Pacific region, 3.3 million customers don't have management tools. In the EMEA region, 10.3 million don't have management. Um, in the Americas region, 11.7 million don't have management of their VMware environment. That means there is a fantastic opportunity for you to expand your consulting business and get involved with this cloud management platform with an area in the industry that is going rapidly. So let's talk about this. How do we get involved? Obviously, we have a lot of customers out there that have adopted virtualization, whether it be VMware or another vendor. We've got managed virtualization out there. Now, there's sp three specific use cases that exist and I'll briefly talk about the products and how they relate to these use cases here. First of all, we've got OPEX-centric with intelligent operations. Then we've got automation achieving agility, and that continues on to into our DevOps strategy for development-based environments with uh, integrated OpenStack, vRealize Enterprise, and DevOps Ready IT with vRealize CodeStream integration. So let me go through and, and focus on each one of these bullet points and talk a little bit about the products that enable this capability. Delivering intelligent operations is all about having a management tool that helps you monitor and observe what's going on in your environment. At VMware, we have vRealize Operations, and vRealize Operations provides a simple dashboard that shows you health, risk and efficiency in your environment. Health showing immediate problems you have, risk identifying future problems, and efficiency is about finding opportunities to optimize the way you use these resources. So when the customer sees the product dashboard and the results of their environment, the data is very compelling and it's very quick to start providing intelligent feedback to you. So when you first put this product in, it starts collecting information about the customer's environment, and puts it into a graphical context that is very palatable and easy for the end users to start to make sense of their environment. In addition, vRealize Operation has intelligence built into the platform with what we call Smart Alerts. Smart Alerts, if I drill down into one of these Smart Alerts for a second here, it shows me that the virtual machine is running short of CPU resources and that's creating a performance impact to this VM. So our smart alerts have deducted this information from various different inputs. So the issue here is capacity from a CPU perspective, and we can identify what's causing the problem. Now there may be multiple symptoms. Those multiple symptoms aggregate into a smart alert, and we can determine what the root cause is. So what are the recommendations? How do we go about fixing this? In this particular case, a virtual machine is constrained by CPU. So this machine needs more CPU in this example. So our fix for this particular case are recommendations to add more CPU. In addition to having that smart alert and guidance on how to resolve it, we can automate some tasks. So we could, instead of going back to vSteer to add more CPU to a virtual machine, we could click on a, a menu option here that automatically goes and adds CPU to that virtual machine. Just one example of how we can use operations. vRealize Operations is collecting information about your environment. So it starts out essentially empty. And as you build and deploy more virtual machines, we of course start having an incremental count for virtual machines. So you have this linear line of actual deployed VMs. We also have a total capacity. Now, as we deploy these VMs, we are reducing our available capacity. So these two curves will then be able to create a linear forecast where they intersect. 
Obviously, growth intersects with available capacity. And this diagram offers a fantastic opportunity to identify when those time periods are. So then we can start using this information to forecast based on our consumption patterns. And let's say we had a project to deploy another 10 VMs. We could overlay that project and then see what that influence has from a future capacity and growth standpoint. Very powerful capabilities. So vRealize Operations not only provides insight into our on-premise environment, but it's also designed to support hybrid cloud integration and look at other cloud platforms. So we can not only monitor on-premise information, but we can look at our services running alongside a public cloud offering and what their capabilities are. In addition to vRealize Operations, which is more about the more structured data, we have vRealize Log Insight. vRealize Log Insight is more about the unstructured data, and it's a tool that you can use to analyze that unstructured data. What do I mean by that? Think about those servers that have logging information that we're not capturing, or the router or the switch or the firewall. If we aggregate that into a central location, vRealize Log Insight gives us the capability with a graphical tool to start analyzing and troubleshooting. So V realizes more for that structured metrics and alerts and events and public integration with product. V realize log insight is more for that unstructured raw log data and providing a tool that helps us analyze that environment. In addition to V realize log insight and V realize operations, it makes sense that we start learning how we're using these resources. And this is where V realize business for cloud comes in and provides that functionality. So VRealize Business allows us to plug in financial values, the cost of CPU, cost of memory, cost of disk space, and allows us to then aggregate these resources in our environment to put costs associated with these platforms and these services. So we can then start metering and costing and pricing our infrastructure. This is the basis for then looking at private cloud consumption, where we can look at the overall cost per department that they're consuming in our IT resources, or the overall cost per application, if you want to look at it from that perspective. Out of the box, we have reporting functionality that's already pre-built and pre-populated based on um, common public information of cost of memory and CPU. And you can adjust these. These are all in tabular format that you can very quickly go back and edit and modify. So it makes it more accurate to your physical infrastructure and your costs. Now, being that we have an understanding of our private costs, we can then start to compare what it costs to run our private cloud if we were to deploy these 10 VMs uh, on our private cloud instead of maybe using a public cloud. So we could compare that to, uh, say, Amazon Web Service or Azure from Microsoft or VMware's vCloud Air as a platform. So you can start then making intelligent business decisions about where you want to run your infrastructure from. What about agility? Automating IT, vRealize Automation allows us to take some of the more common tasks that we do in automation or in workflow within IT and start building them into what we call a blueprint. Now, a blueprint includes things like security policies, reservation policies, approval policies, workflows, service level agreement commitments, cost profiles, provisioning and automation, and makes it easy for us to compile and build a workflow using this canvas that is drag and drop functionality. So you don't have to go out and build your own scripting engine to start automating workflows. We have an engine that is vRealize Automation that you can very easily build a complete platform, including networking and micro-segmentation with drag and drop functionality that then you can publish to a catalog. Speaking of catalog, this is what the catalog looks like. So vRealize Automation and the portal we provide as part of vRealize Automation allows us to publish those blueprints to end users. So the end user can log into an app store type experience and click on which application they want to use within the organization. Obviously, who better than to drive consumption than the end user within your community? vRealize Automation also has tools to help us manage 
overcommitment in virtualization. So we have tools, for example, we can go out and look at VMs that are not being powered on for, I don't know, a week or two weeks. And from that information, we can then identify underutilized resources or overcommitted resources. And we can go back and we can prompt the end user or the creator of that resource and say, hey, look, um, this virtual machine's been down for the last three months. You ordered it three months ago. You're not using it. Even though it's powered off, you're still consuming and wasting disk space. So you can prompt them. Do you still need this service? When do you expect to use it? If they're not planning to use it and you've built it into automation, they can go out and click and re-automate a new one. So you can point them to the catalog item as a follow-up. So next time when they do need to run the service, they can go out and click and provision that. And vRealize Automation helps us deploy that much rapidly than we've traditionally been able to. So in other words, we can act based on those actions once we've verified whether it's required to be in use. And that continues on into the development space. Automation of IT infrastructure is one thing. We can continue to extend these capabilities out into development platforms with the use of what we call vRealize code stream. So vRealize automation takes these concepts of deployment and automated workflows and can build code release products and integrate those code release products into a workflow that continues on from infrastructure into development. So this helps to automate more develop of the development process. It helps to further accelerate the delivery of software projects and reduces the risks and errors associated with fast-moving DevOps organizations and teams. Now, in CodeStream, in vRealize Automation, we can do a number of things. Really, it's limitless in what you can build in workflows and development life cycles. So you might automate tasks like going out and retrieving objects from an artifact retrieval or a project, deploying those, deploying it into a test environment, then staging that after testing into a um, maybe user acceptance testing model where we can automate and track the life cycle of a build and the build number as it goes through its release. And then if it passes all the user acceptance testing, maybe it stages automatically into production and you can use gating rules to control that behavior. If you think about it, if you go through a recurring testing model, why not automate that? And if you can use tools to achieve that, vRealize Automation with its pluggable architecture supports that capability. So through Artifactory, we can connect to multiple repositories repositories like Artifactory in itself, Git, Yum, Nugget, Perforce, Nexus, um, supports continuous integration tools like Jenkins and Bamboo, Visual Studio. There's other Xenon plugins which include support for testing frameworks with SOAP UI, Sinocube, uh, Selenium, into provisioning and configuration management with vRealize Automation, Docker, and Puppet, and Chef, and those capabilities like SaltStack. It even further extends through vRealize Orchestrator with change management and other product integrations. So things like BMC or um, Service Manager from Hewlett Packard or ServiceNow as a short list of the extensibility that's available. It even includes things like bug tracking with Bugzilla and Jira and Rally and products like that. And that extensibility makes this platform extremely powerful for development lifecycle management. So I said extensible. This platform is orchestrated to be a pluggable architecture. You can expand the capabilities of vRealize Operation, vRealize Log Insight, vRealize Code Stream, and its development integration through what we call the VMware Solution Exchange. So there's management packs that can help you go out and expand the operational management of this platform. Look at not only the virtual platform, but hardware solutions as well, storage solutions, and really make this a collaborative tool set that can help customers be far more successful in these cloud management strategies. So that's available at the solutionexchange.vmware.com. What a lot of people don't understand is, and you may not be aware, that VMware is actually a leader in the cloud management platform solutions. We're a leader in both 
cloud systems management, and cloud automation. This is recognized by Forrester, Private, and Hybrid Cloud Waves. And while Gardner doesn't provide the magic quadrant for this space, we're always on the shortlist of vendors supplying cloud management technologies. IDC ranks us number one in systems management and number one in data center automation in the industry. Now that's a pretty, pretty big statement when you consider the competitors that we're up against. So where's the opportunity? It is in helping customers step into these automation products. Why does that make sense? Why would you engage as a partner in enhancing this capability? Well, it's pretty simple. An average vSphere sale is on the realm of about $5,000 a deal. When you start selling and helping customers step into automation with things like vSphere, the realized operations, your deal size increases by about four times the value. So vSphere and operations management increases by about four times. When you start stepping up into the vRealize suite of products, your potential revenue as a partner in consulting dollars and product sales goes up by nearly 40 times based on the average deal size. So does it make sense for you guys as partners to start getting involved in this cloud management platform Personally, I think it's a great opportunity. So if you're looking for a way to expand your business and improve capabilities, I think this cloud management platform is not only a great opportunity, it's a large market and there's opportunity for you guys in consulting as a strategic partner to these customers that could really use your help. The one thing that this will do is that that will position you as a partner as a strategic advisor to this organization. So there will be continued further guidance and consulting opportunities that will come as a result of you heading down these paths with these customers. So how do we get involved in this cloud management platform? Wouldn't this be a huge undertaking for us to go about? We have a capability that helps customers as well as partners deploy what we call a VMware validated design. So what is a VMware validated design then? It is a comprehensive set of prescriptive documentation that customers as well as partners have access to that's designed to help you build an entire software defined data center. It includes many components. It has release notes about products architectural details like design objectives, design decisions, and deep technical aspects of designs. It has architectural diagrams, planning and preparation documents, pre-deployed checklists, step-by-step um, -step deployment and implementation guides, configuration workbooks, validation workbooks after install to make sure it's fully operating as expected and other operational guidance documents that include how to configure monitoring and alerting, how to set up business continuity, how to start up and shut down your infrastructure and make sure it runs successfully, and many more operational add-ons. So if you're interested in this, VMware Validated Designs, you can become a partner, a VMware Validated Design partner, where you can use this methodology to deploy services for customers. Customers also have the ability to go look at this themselves if they want to do their own implementation. But obviously, your experience with virtualization will carry forward into these other products and this market opportunity to expand this capability. So you don't have to start from scratch. You can use a VMware validated design, which has a list of software and a bill of materials that you need to go through in order to implement this design this design has been tested and proven by VMware and is released, includes ongoing patching and upgrade as a continuous lifecycle integration product and can really help you make big progress with those customers and implement it very successfully. So hopefully in today's presentation, you've come to understand there is a fantastic opportunity out there for you guys as partners and consultants to get involved with customers and help them really start making great strides in improving the way that their IT departments deliver business on a normal day-to-day -day basis. Helping them make the step into a cloud management platform 
you will help them realize the opportunity and in turn you'll become a trusted and strategic partner for that IT department and I'm pretty sure that will lead to further consulting engagement. So expanded revenue for you, a more strategic value proposition for IT departments and their business will help them be more successful in the future and really get a grasp on this cloud platform and the cloud industry. Go out and explore, explore VMware Validated Designs and I think you'll find that these products and this suite of tools are a great opportunity for you guys to expand on. So that wraps it up for today. Thank you for joining and thank you for listening to my session. I hope you found this presentation valuable and I hope it gets you excited about expanding your opportunities with VMware and our customers.